Hey yo, welcome to Eat Your Heart Out. I'm Jay, and today we're cooking a special Xmas feast. We have a special guest in the house. What up, Professor Grimpel? How are you? Hi, Jay. What a pleasure to be here. Pretty, pretty exciting to be in the kitchen, you know. Yeah. It's always nice to be here for Christmas. I'm wearing my, my special Christmas mm -hmm. t-shirt. This obviously got a lot of controversy at my church in Setlebosh. Why? Because it's written in English, you know. So. Yeah, but before <laughs> we get started, you see my Movember got a little bit out of control, so I'm going to go clean that up because it's always important to be hygienic. Ladies, okay? Ladies! Cool, I'm, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to get started. Hey, welcome let's, back. Let's do this thing. So the first one up is we're going to make some Puff Daddy pastries. Puff Daddy, quite exciting, eh? Hey. It's a pretty badass kind of pastry. There's some hardcore hey. up in there, yo. It's the easiest thing in the world to make. You have one roll of puff pastry over here, so we clean it a little out. Next up, we need about a handful of grated cheese. Yeah. What type of cheese is this, uh, Jade? What, what is this? That's Smells... What nationality of woman makes this cheese? <laughs> yeah. That's a Gruyere. So Gruyere is cheaper than Parmesan cheese. Obviously, you can use Parmesan if you want, but all you want is a hard cheese to Easily grated, right? A hard so go cheese, for a right? hard cheddar as well yeah, if you okay. want. That's gray air right over there. So about a handful of that, thanks for doing the honor. We need some sun-dried tomato pesto, so that's over there. So the store-bought stuff is great. About a tablespoon of that's going in. One egg to bind it off when we fold it. And some salt and pepper and olive oil. And that's it. So let's start. Pretty, pretty exciting. I've already got on the cheese grating here because it's so one of wheat. my kitchen skills, actually. It's one of Thank the you. many things I'm good at doing in the kitchen. Thanks to Bexburg, we have a rolling pin right over here. Oh, it's a beautiful rolling pin. It looks fluid and dynamic. And we're gonna drink it later as well. Mm. <laughs> yeah. We use that just to smoothen out the pastry. So you want about the size of the board, that's cool. I'm gonna fold it over later so I have enough. Uh, and then I'm gonna whisk up one egg. You're gonna grate up some cheese, please. That'd be awesome, some funky cheese. And then I'm gonna spoon over the pesto first. So go with that. About two tablespoons will do enough. You don't wanna choke on sun dried tomato pesto. I'm gonna, uh, you're gonna sprinkle over the cheese, please. And then we're gonna go with the egg. Over. I don't have a little fussy, whatever, the paintbrush. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use a fork. I mean, you can use your hands as well if you want. Fold over the pastry, cut it in, in strips, and then give it a twist. And that's it. Pop it in the oven, 200 degrees Celsius, for about 10 to 15 minutes so it crisps up. Sounds delicious, and right? And then we can wrap that on top on the Puff Daddy pastries. Hey yo, so for our main course, we're gonna make 40 ways how to screw up a chicken. Yeah, pretty exciting. Before we start that though, I think we take our dual purpose rolling pin and start using it for the other purpose, so, eh, if, you, if you know what I mean. So you pop it for us. Cool, so the screw up, for the screw up chicken, we need about three bulbs of garlic, about 40 plus of oil, you don't have to count them all out. One free range chicken. Yeah, chickens, we obviously had a lot of chickens on the farm growing up in Settler Bosch. I don't know so much about dead chickens, I haven't spent much time in the kitchen. But with live chickens, they really like it when you put your fingers right deep in the <laughs> <laughs> So first up, Clifton is going to crush the garlic cloves with us. So you can use a pestle and mortar, you can use a side of a knife, but we're going to use a pan. So crush that all up, then on the stove with a roasting pan, Add whole lugs of olive oil, some good stuff. So you want to flavor the olive oil with the garlic first. So fry it up for about two to three minutes. You'll hear it snap, crackle, pop. So when that's done, take out the garlic. Next up with the chicken. Just brown the chicken on all the sides so it goes nice and crispy and golden. You don't want to keep it in there for too long so that the skin goes all dry and, uh, and cooked. So add the garlic to the, uh, to the pan. Follow with a whole bottle of wine. All the good stuff in there. Cut up the potatoes, pop it in there, and then into the oven. Preheated oven of about 200 to 220 degrees Celsius with the lid on or some foil over the top if you don't have a lid. And that's it. What's next for dessert, Jay? Eh? So for the finale, we're gonna make a broken trifle of white chocolate mousse, biscuits at the bottom, and then just some strawberries and cherries and stuff. Yes. Four of my favorite things, huh? Eh? Awesome. Work. Just need lemon, beer, and burros, and we've got a lot. Eh? <laughs> cool. So you need some boudoir biscuits. Finger biscuits right over there, about one packet is cool, you're gonna use them. Uh, you need a, uh, 500 ml of cream, you know, uh, some white chocolate because it's Christmas, we're not gonna skimp on the good stuff, but you can use milk chocolate, white chocolate, I think you can find. And then some strawberries and cherries, and that's it, let's go. Cool. So this is how we're gonna make it. Start off 
by breaking one or two finger biscuits at the bottom of the glass or with a little bowl. You can also make one big trifle if you want to. Let's so go with that, break it up, whisk up 500 ml of cream, melt the white chocolate in a bain-marie. So what we've done is we've used a little pot, some water at the bottom, about a cup of water, so the steam will heat up the chocolate with a little bowl at the, bo uh, the top so that as the chocolate doesn't actually come in direct heat, uh, contact with the heat because if you melt it in a pan directly with the heat it's gonna burn and become a toffee so that's how we're gonna do it first up we're gonna whisk about a tablespoon of the whipped cream with the melted white chocolate and then fold the white chocolate with a metal spoon back into the cream right so you want to keep it airy spoon about two tablespoons of the white chocolate mousse on top of the broken biscuits into the glass Top of some sliced strawberries and cherries, any berries that you like. Put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes, an hour, just to cool down. You can eat it directly, I mean, I, I can't wait that long. And that's it, your broken trifle. So now that everything is ready, all that there's left to do is feed our awesome friends. Mm, thank you, Jay. Thanks so much for everything. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's been flipping awesome. Group of eight, eh?